We just heard from the founder of Empowered, Lonnie Edwards. She is here with me now. We are going to be telling you, well, you saw it for yourselves, but it's a line of handbags. It has built-in chargers. So basically, your phone will never have a dead battery again. Our judges with us today, we actually have Vince Ponzo all the way to my left, Columbia Business School Entrepreneurship Center Director, Deborah Farrington of Starvest Partners, and Cameron Ansari, right to my left, from Graycroft Partners. So I'm going to start with you, Vince. So what did you think of the pitch? I like the pitch. I actually think you have a really good looking product. Probably wind up buying one for my wife. <laughs> um, I, I do have some questions around the IP and how you produce it and where you produce it and the scalability of that side. But overall, I thought it was a good pitch. So, Lonnie, what about these issues of scalability and to Vince's point, protecting your position as a first mover? So we have a pending patent on the incorporating the charging into the bag. Right now we've been selling exclusively on our site and we're reaching out to retail partners this week that are interested in caring to scale up. Okay, so she actually went to law school, so I guess she knows a little bit about <laughs> IP, but Deborah, what is your take? Well, I think the product looks great. The design is beautiful, the colors are great, the price seems competitive, and wearable technology is a big trend. But I too have some questions. First of all, what is to prevent anybody from taking a phone charger and throwing it in their bag so that they don't have to think, I do, do you have to carry this bag, so I need to uh, have that phone charger. And Deborah, you mean like a Mophie pack or anything exactly. else like that? Yes, yeah. precisely. And the second thing is competition. If there's one area that is very competitive, it is handbags. You've got all sorts of brands. You've got Michael Kors. You've got Tory Burch. And I'm very concerned about that. There also is competition in your space. Mm -hmm. I think you have Everpurse and some other things like that. So how are you going to stand out from the crowd? So for the portable battery packs, the power source is built into the back pocket lining of the bag, so it doesn't take up any space. So you still have access to the full interior compartment of the bag. You don't have this big pack floating around. As far as price goes, the price of our bag started at 119 So if you were to buy a battery pack that will charge your phone four full times, which our bags do, and buy a nice leather bag on top of that, you're going to be paying more than our entry-level item. So um, I think that's how we differentiate in the market. Cameron, what was your take when you saw the pitch? Um, first of all, the bag looks much better than I thought it would. I was picturing sort of like a black uh, vinyl thing, like, like, a, like a laptop bag. So you really managed to, to blend kind of, I think, style and fashion with the functionality. Uh, my biggest question in, in the same vein as some of the other judges is um, actually just around the safety of the product. Does it get hot? I mean, I'm carrying this thing next to my body all day, and it's heating my phone, so it must have some power source. And how hot does it get? How do you or regulate you, for that? you spill your water bottle or all yeah. other kinds of things That's that happen a... in purses. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's lithium-ion, so the same kind of power that powers your lithium-ion, so okay. the same kind of power that powers your phone. So it's similar to that. It's built into the lining, so it's not like floating around loose. It's in the back pocket. Um, so the odds of like spilling something inside of the battery or spilling it on your phone, um, it's, it's protected in the back of the bag. Do you have any relationships, I'm just curious here, with any either designers or with distributors or department stores? And that is, is that something you're even trying to do? Yes, trying, uh, yes. So getting started right now, talking to a bunch of department stores and figuring out our retail partners for the fall, um, have a large community of designers, talking to some of them about doing collaborations, maybe some licensing of the technology in addition. So Vince, based on what you've heard, would you introduce Lonnie to your partners, your investment partners? I love the idea, though I think at the end of the day with the competitive products as well as with the uh, over time, the ability for other handbag um, producers to incorporate that technology into their bags as well. I think at the end of the day, I would look at this more as, as a handbag company than as, as a different type of play. Um, and with that, I wouldn't only because of the, the scalability issues that, that are often there and the fickle nature of, of fashion. Deborah, what's your take? I have some of those concerns as well. How do you build a competitive moat around this product? I'm not sure I heard you say that. Also, the power of brands and handbags is really good and very, very big. So how do you develop an aspirational product like a Michael Kors or when someone says, I'm saving for a Prada, how do you get them to say that about the empowered bag? I'm not sure. So until you answer those questions, I think I would not invite you to my partners yet. But once you do, I would certainly consider it. We focus on B2B, so the, uh, the issue of partnerships becomes very important as well. Cameron. Um, well, you know, I think you could solve some of those issues. You've seen Warby Parker and Google Glass and folks partner with 
uh, major fashion labels to design for them. That's something maybe you could think about doing as well. Um, in terms of our partnership, you know, we these kinds of products I think are tough for us to, to look at as investments, and they almost feel like the kind of you, the kind of thing you could consumer finance through a Kickstarter. People that want to buy the product just um, you know put money in and, and purchase it directly. You don't necessarily need to go through a venture funding process for it. That's interesting for some of those niche products. Lonnie, thank you very much. Thank you to Lonnie. Thank you as well to our judges, Vince, Deborah, and Cameron. We